Good afternoon. Welcome to the Wales Golf World Handicapping presentation. Uh, today's the 31st of March. We were hoping to be at the Grove Golf Club today in South Wales. Unfortunately, the current situation has led to me being in my spare bedroom uh, trying to present this to you. I hope you find this useful. Uh, both myself and Trevor Davies, who are going to be presenting on this, have been working hard to get this presentation together so that we can present this to you online. Uh, hopefully, as I say, hopefully you find this useful. Um, this will be fully available on the Wales Golf website. And, and hopefully later in the year, we'll be able to get out to you physically and run the workshops around the country as planned. Uh, please do send any questions into Handicapping at Wales Golf if there's anything you don't understand. And hopefully you in, enjoy the presentation. Thank you. So the World Handicap System, or WHS, was launched in January of this year, so 2020. Uh, and to date, over 35 countries are already using the system, including most of the Americas, Australia, South Africa, Sweden and Finland. Um, all other countries will be following. Um, feedback received from these countries by the RNA has been very positive. There have obviously been some issues, um, the main one being around the use of the technology. Uh, so it's absolutely imperative that we that, we, that the clubs get this right uh, and we get this right and, and we'll be looking at the technology a little bit later in the presentation. Uh, the system will go into effect in all other parts of the world between now and sometime in 2021. Uh, as you should be aware, here in Great Britain and Ireland, we will do so on the 2nd of November 2020. Uh, despite the current coronavirus situation, that is still the plan and that is still our date for making WHS live over here. So this presentation is split into two sections. Um, in the first session, we're going to give you an overview of the system and we're going to look at some of the key elements of the rules. Uh, and then later on, we'll go through the handicap committee procedures and ways in which the technology will underpin this system. So the key principles and elements of the system. Well, uh, we have a minimum number of scores to obtain a handicap, uh, a 54 max handicap, um, the maximum hole score, so net double bogey, and acceptable scores for handicap purposes. Um, we also want it to be consistent and portable around the world. So uh, to help with this, there is abnormal weather condition and course adjustments, so similar to the current uh, CSS we know and love. Um, there'll be calculations that'll be based on ability with a memory and of course the playing handicap which includes the course uh, and slope rating and par. Um, the system also needs to be modern and adaptable uh, so there'll be daily revisions of handicaps, uh, the integration of the nine hole scores which are becoming even more popular and of course the accommodation of local cultures to ensure that this, this one system will suit every area of the world. So moving on to the rules themselves, there are only seven rules, um, whereas the current Kongu manual currently has 26. Uh, as with the rules of golf, the RNA and USGA have tried to make them as simple as possible to understand. Rule one, this covers the purpose and authorization of the rules. In other words, who is authorized to use the RNA and USGA systems? And in our case with GBNI, it'll be the home unions, as, it, as is currently the case with Congo. Uh, rule one also deals with how to obtain a handicap index, uh, which we currently refer to as an exact handicap. Rule, tell, rule two, which tells us which scores are acceptable for handicap purposes within GBNI. These won't necessarily be the same as those which may be acceptable in other parts of the world. Rule three, uh, this covers situations where scores may be acceptable and how whole scores should be adjusted. For example, your net double bogey adjustments. Rule four, this covers the process of submitting acceptable scores, which we're gonna look at later. Rule five, this explains how handicap indices are calculated and the safeguards put in place to ensure that a player's handicap index reflects their demonstrated ability. Rule, fix, rule six, this will reflect the number of strokes that a player needs to play any course. That's any as long as it has a course and slope rating. 
And finally, rule seven, which shows the tools available to the committee to allow, allow them to make changes to players' handicaps, and most importantly, covers their role in setting appropriate terms and conditions for all players at the club. So the World Handicap System includes both the rules of handicapping and this includes the USGA course rating system, something that we've been using in Wales for many, many years. Um, this system will become a fundal, fundamental part of the system and will enable all golfers to obtain uh, and maintain their handicap index, uh, use that index on any golf course around the world and compete or play with anyone on a fair and equal basis. Well, how will it do this? Well, by having a course and slope rating for each set of tees and by applying adjustments to players' handicap indices to reflect the level of difficulty of the course being played and also the format used. Uh, by assessing the impact of playing conditions, uh, by limiting the maximum hole scores, by applying uniform calculations for updating handicaps and by updating these on a daily basis. And finally, by reviewing players' handicap indices on a regular basis. Obviously, one of the key elements of a handicap system is that ability to um, have equity for all players. Uh, how do we define equity? Well, there's no real answer to that um, within the de definitions of the rules. But what the RNA and the USJ have tried to do is create a system which is as fair as possible for all players. So moving on to some of the more nitty gritty parts of the system, uh, well, first we'll turn our attention to course rating. So what is course rating? Well, basically it's your current standard scratch score. So your SSS, which you should see on your scorecards now. Only the new system is not gonna be truncated. So it's gonna be to one decimal point and it reflects the scoring difficulty of the course for a scratch player. Moving on for the course rating, we have the bogey rating which has arrived in exactly the same way as the course rating, only this, this time is based on the scoring difficulty for a bogey golfer, which is a 20 handicap male and a 20 handicap female. So what is assessed when we rate a golf course? Well, approximately 95% of the rating is based on length. And that figure includes the measured length of each hole as shown on the certificate of measurement, which is why we ask for these before we rate your course, the roll on the ball, which on average will be around 20 yards, and elevation, which can be which can give you either more or less roll. We also assess whether the hole has got an elbow or dog leg or a layup, which should lengthen the effective length of the hole. We also look at wind, which we would normally get average speeds from the Met Office. And finally, altitude. Uh, of course, we've all seen the events at altitude where shot length on courses which have an altitude greater than 2,000 feet will be adjusted because shots will travel further in the thin air. We then have 10 obstacles which we have to consider. So we've got the topography, where we evaluate the impact of the terrain on play, fairways, so how difficult is it to keep the ball on them, the green target, how difficult is it to hit the green with your approach shot, recoverability from the rough, so how difficult is it to cover if you miss the fairway or green, Bunkers, same again, how difficult is it to cover for them? Where are they? How deep? And so on and so forth. Penalty errors, both lateral and crossing. What length of shot is needed to safely carry a penalty error? What's the difference of a lateral obstruction from the centre of a landing zone? Trees, so what's the overall impact of trees on the play of a hole? And green surfaces, how fast are they? Are they flat, contoured? Is there different levels? And finally, the psychological factor where we evaluate the cumulative effect of all of the above obstacle on a player's score. So having a look at this slide, we can see here both holes are identical in terms of shape and length. The top example has virtually no obstacles along its length, whereas in the lower example, we've added water, which has to be crossed to both reach the fairway and the green. And there are substantial bunkers at some of the landing zones and green side. There are trees along both sides of the fairway and there's an out of bounds at the back of the green. The top hole you would be able to play in a blur. The lower hole is significantly more difficult to play, especially for the bogey player. So the rating will obviously be higher. So therefore, handicap indexes will be adjusted relatively, relative to the difficulty of the course being played. This is one of the basis on which the World Handicap System is built. 
something which I'm sure you have seen flying around and the ter a phrase you have seen flying around in relation to the World Handicap System is slope rating. So what is it? Well, the slope is the relative playing difficulty of a course for a bogey golfer compared to that of a scratch golfer. That difference in the two rating figures is then multiplied by a fixed number, which is different for men and ladies to arrive at the slope rating. The slope ratings range from 55 to 155, with 155 being the most difficult. The standard slope rating used throughout the system is 113, and you'll find this figure cropping up in various algorithms, for example, when working out gross differentials. The average slope rating throughout GBNI is around 124, but please don't get hung up with your club's slope rating compared to those of other clubs. Slope is not a direct comparison between one club and another. As I've just said, it's the comparison between the scratch and the bogey golfer on each set of tees. So now we've understood hopefully a little bit uh, about the basis of rating the course and the slope rating. Um, we then move on to how do we get a handicap? Well, there's a very simple answer for that. It's almost exactly the same way as we do now. So by submitting scores for 54 holes, made of any combination of nine or 18 hole rounds. So this table here shows us the progression of, of our handicap index. So some scores three to five, we take the lowest score differential and adjust that depending on the number of scores submitted. So two less than the lowest differential after three scores to no adjustment when we get to five. Thereafter, we start to average a set of the lowest differentials, starting from the average of the lowest two with six scores to the average of lowest eight when a player has a fully developed record of 20 scores. Only scores from players with a fully developed handicap record will be used in the playing conditions calculation. So how do we calculate the handicap indices once a player has a fully developed handicap? We know that we average the lowest eight of the most recent 20 scores differentials, round as the nearest tenth, so to one decimal point. The system also has an inbuilt memory of all scores within the past 12 months and uses this to cap a handicap to stop it rising too quickly because of a, a short run of poor form. It also applies re reductions for exceptional scores, which happens now, on, now and then, of course, and these will be done automatically. But the handicap committee can override these reductions if it's appropriate to do so. So if we take a look at a scoring record, so this player has 20 scores on his or her record. So we simply take the lowest eight, uh, which can be seen in the right hand column and average that figure. So these are the lowest eight score differentials highlighted in yellow. And the average of these, it works out at 13. So the player plays another round of golf on the 25th of September at Meadow Golf Club. Uh, this time you can see with a score differential of 14.5. Means the round played at Meadow Hill on the 3rd of April down the bottom with a score differential of 12.1 now drops out of the last 20 scores. And now we go through the same process again, averaging the lowest eight using the new set of 20 scores, which you can see highlighted there in yellow. This time the new handicap index is 13.3. So you can see that the Congo handicaps under the World Handicap System can increase far quicker than they can under the current Congo system. We can limit the handicap increases by using the system's inbuilt memory, which remembers a player's low handicap index. And it uses this memory to ensure that the handicap index doesn't stray too far away from the level of the ability of the player has already shown. Um, so rather appropriately, the, uh, this limit of upward movement is called the cap. Uh, the cap can come in two forms, so a soft cap, cap and a hard cap. So the soft cap suppresses upward movement and the hard cap prevents further, further upward movement. So just to enlarge on this, so the soft cap suppresses any increase greater than three above the low index by 50% or the hard cap prevents any increase whatsoever of more than five. This capping procedure will only apply to those with fully developed handicaps. So the next few slides um, will hopefully give you a bit of an analogy 
um, to how the caps would apply. OK, so we'll go through that now. So here is our racing car analogy to hopefully describe how the soft and hard cap system works. So you're a steady driver and you don't generally veer off course. So in this aspect, it would be your eight out of 20 scores remaining fairly constant. However, you suddenly would lose a bit of control and run into the gravel bed. This would be a loss in form, potentially. The gravel doesn't stop you, but it would slow you down, It'd slow the speed of the car down. So this would be the soft cap. And there it is. So it doesn't stop the car completely, but, but the change in surface would lower the speed of the car. So with the plus three, the soft cap. However, if the gravel doesn't slow you down quick enough, you will then carry on going and hit the fence. This would be the hard cap. So when the difference between the player's new and low handicap index is no greater than three, no adjustments are made. The car stays on track. However, any difference of more than three strokes to your low handicap index and the soft gap or the gravel in this example, will suppress that speed by 50%. And when the difference will come greater than five, well then you hit the wall and your new handicap index will increase no further. So going the other way now, which is the direction all of, our, all of us want our handicaps to go. Well, there's no caps for downward movements, but there is some provisions for exceptional scores. So a score of seven or more strokes better than a player's handicap index will result in an automatic reduction of one extra shot. A score of 10 or more strokes better will result in a reduction of two extra shots. As ever, the handicap committee can override this adjustment, but only having considered all of the evidence, if it then considers that the adjustments would result in the new handicap not being a fairest reflection on the player's demonstrated ability, it can, of course, reverse that. Um, reduction. So now moving on to the playing conditions calculation. Uh, we should be all fairly familiar with this adjustment under the Congo system, which is the competition standard scratch score. Um, under the world handicap system, this is a pretty similar idea. The PCC is generally performed once a day, although there are a few examples for exception if the weather is particularly bad in the morning and the complete opposite in the afternoon. But that will very much be the exception rather than the rule. So a higher score on a tough day could end up being one of your best eight. The PCC applies only to acceptable scores submitted by players with a handicap index of 36 or below. And the range of adjustments will be between minus one and plus three, so which is the same as it is now. Uh, there will be the idea of reductions only will also disappear. The PCC is applied automatically to the store, score differential of all players submitting scores on that day. So that'll all be done automatically. So we've been through quite a lot there of the sort of technical nitty gritty. Uh, hopefully you've um, managed to follow uh, the presentation. Uh, just to recap, so how does this all affect um, a player's handicap index. Well, so the slope rating results in an adjustment to your course and playing handicap. We use your best eight of 20 scores as the basis for the calculation. There's a cap that prevents your handicap from going up too much in a relatively, relatively short space of time. And then we've got the PCC, which adjusts your score differential depending on the course conditions. It's probably a little bit more conservative than the current um, competition standard scratch, but a very similar thing. And finally, we explore the idea of exceptional scores reductions, which are made immediately um, and are not the subject of having more than one exceptional score, which is uh, how it is in our current system. So at the very core of the handicap index calculation uh, is, of course, a score. Um, so rule two, this rule covers the conditions that a score must satisfy for it to be acceptable. Uh, so that a player's index is the best possible reflection of his or her ability. So 
So what is an acceptable score for handicap purposes? Well, the round must be played in an authorised format. It must be played over a minimum number of holes. We'll have a look at that in a little bit more detail just shortly. Uh, obviously, they must be played by the rules of golf and with at least one other person and generally someone who's acceptable uh, by your handicap committee. It must be on a course that has a current course and slope ratings. It must be during an active season, although this is not relevant to GBNI, but in certain parts of the world it is. Um, the score has to be certified or signed by marker and must be made available for peer review. So this table here shows all of the scores that are acceptable uh, within GBNI. So you can forget all of the rumours you've heard about uh, match play and better balls and having to submit every single scorecard every time you play golf. Um, we're very much under the same rules that we operate now. So uh, individual stroke play, whether that be organised or in general play. So in other words, all medals, Stapleford's, par bogey and maximum score rounds will be the acceptable um, formats of play within GBNI. By general play, we mean supplementary scores. Um, and by organised competitions, we mean those that are organised by the Handicap Committee or regularly organised events such as roll-ups or swindles. So not necessarily organised by the club, it can be the professional or a member, but all those playing will have agreed that their scores can be submitted for handicap purposes. Um, there is also the idea that a minimum number of holes must be played for the score to be acceptable. So for an 18 hole round, a minimum of 10 holes must be played for this score to be acceptable for handicap purposes. For a nine hole score, all nine holes must be played. So hole scores can be adjusted. So as you do now, you would adjust a high score by applying the net double bogey rule. That's the lowest score in a hole for which a player would get zero stable with points. However, if you're playing an 18 hole round and if all the holes haven't been played, then you can record a net par on those holes not played. By holes not played, we mean those not started. We don't mean holes started but not finished. These are dealt with under the net double bogey rule. However, there's an exception. So if you've played less than 14 holes of an 18 hole round, say you didn't play the 12th or 13th hole, you can record a net par plus one on the first unplayed hole, the 12th, and the rest would be net pars. However, there must be a valid reason why holes have not been played. For instance, bad light or bad weather, player injury or illness, or a hole being declared out of play by the committee for maintenance or reconstruction. If the committee considers the player's reasons for not competing, uh, completing the round as being inv invalid, then they can apply a penalty score under uh, uh, Rule 7. So as I've already mentioned, the idea of supplementary scores uh, and pre-registration uh, exists from the current system. So supplementary scores are now referred to as general play. Um, and as I said, the process of submitting the scores is exactly the same now as now. A player can be considered to have pre-registered to submit a, a supplementary score by playing in a regular organised event with other players, but the organiser should make that perfectly clear to those that are playing. So when to submit a score? Well, this can get a little bit confusing. Uh, many people now play competitive golf abroad, although sadly not at the minute. So for example, you're playing in Spain and the competition is an individual Stapleford. That's an acceptable format within both GB&I and Spain. So looking at the table there, you must return that score to your home club. That's fairly clear. If you were playing in Spain in a formal better ball and say that was an acceptable score in Spain, but it's clearly not here, then you'd have to then you'd have to also return your score to the home club. This is where the technology is going to be crucial in facilitating that. Uh, if you were playing in Spain in, say, a par bogey, which may not be an authorised format in Spain, but is within GBNI, then you'd also have to return your score to your home club. And finally, if you're, um, if you're playing a round which is not authorised in Spain and GBNI, such as match play, 
then the score would not be acceptable for handicap purposes, so would not be returned to the home club. As we mentioned a few slides back, um, all acceptable scores must be certified by a marker, as it is now, and be made available for peer review as soon as possible after completing the round. By peer review, we mean that the card can be further scrutinised by someone other than the marker. So someone who is playing in the same group or someone that's a member of the same golf club. So a player playing in the same group can challenge the score if he thinks that there are any anomalies on the posted card. And a member of the club can reasonably verify or challenge a player's handicap index if he has knowledge that the player's demonstrated ability is potentially different to the scores. So in order, in order to allow all of this, the player's scoring records must be accessible to all other members of the golf club. Again, this is a technological issue and it will also be covered in Appendix B of the rules. Hopefully you have a little video on this slide. Every golfer is different. Every golf course is different. Every day is different. The aim of the World Handicap System is to take all these differences and produce a single measure of a player's golfing ability. A handicap index reflecting the score a player can achieve when playing well. To do that, it must start with a handicap calculation which balances responsiveness and stability, consistency and flexibility. At the core of the handicap calculation is your score, demonstrating how well you played your round relative to the course's difficulty, as determined by its course rating and slope rating, and any conditions that might have made the course harder or easier to play on the day. A record of your scores is maintained, and your handicap index is based on an average of the best eight of your last 20 scores. Because your worst scores are discarded, your handicap index reflects the score you're likely to achieve on your better days. The more scores you can submit, the more accurately your handicap index will reflect your golfing ability. While any player can have a bad day or a run of poor form, form is temporary. That's why the handicap calculation does more than just look at your most recent best scores. It retains a memory of your lowest handicap index during the past 12 months and provides mechanisms to ensure bad days don't cause your current handicap index to increase too quickly from that low index. Under normal circumstances, your handicap index should never increase more than five strokes above your low handicap index over a rolling 12-month period. Players have great days too. Juniors and beginners in particular can improve dramatically over a short period of time. The handicap calculation can identify this, applying additional reductions to a handicap index when a player achieves a score of seven strokes or more below their current handicap index. A calculation won't always detect a real change in a player's ability. For that reason, a handicap committee has the tools and can adjust a player's handicap index to better reflect their ability. All these elements come together as your handicap index is revised promptly, ready for the next day or soon after. The World Handicap System delivers a handicap index to all players that is calculated in a consistent way across the globe. It allows players everywhere to continue to enjoy the game they love, wherever they play and whoever they're playing with or against. Hopefully that video has just helped to bring everything together uh, that we have just been going through. So if you've been listening to this straight through, then you've been listening to 29 minutes of action. So please feel free to uh, go and grab a cup of coffee, another biscuit, uh, because there is much, much more fun to come. I hope that you now have got a, a steaming hot cup of coffee or tea next to you and a few biscuits to continue the rest of this presentation. Uh, we'll now move on away from sort of the nitty gritty of the rules to some of the more practical elements uh, of applying these rules and how you're going to play your golf or how your members are going to play your golf. Uh, and also having a look at the techno technology, uh, which will be rolling out later in the year uh, to hopefully bring the game of golf into the 21st century and make everything a lot easier um, for players and clubs to administer. So the first thing I want to sort of talk about is something I've coined from car to course. So 
How will you get to your golf club? What are you going to do to get onto the course and play? Well, your course handicap is the most important thing you need to work out. Uh, so the course handicap is to determines the number of stroke a player receives for the course to be played. So each club will be provided with a handicap table or will need to provide a handicap table to its members and visitors for each set of rated tees. In order to get on the course, you simply look up your index and see what your course handicap is. If you're playing in a comp, you will also need to know what the handicap allowance is, and we'll go through that later for the format that you are playing. So here is an example of a handicap conversion chart. Um, so for this golf club, they have a yellow, a white and a red set of tees. So they have a handicap conversion chart for them three tees, which is what every club will need for all sets of tees that they have. Uh, there are companies out there which will produce professional charts, so metal or plastic. Um, so that's something that a club needs to look into. Um, rating charts can currently be found on the USG web USGA website, and we will be sending out uh, the charts to all clubs. Um, one of the important thing that a club needs to think about is where they want these charts to be placed. Um, so you need to think about when the clubhouse is open or closed, do you want access to it at all times? Therefore, it might need to be weatherproof uh, outside, uh, potentially even by the first tee would be a good place to put it. All clubs will be sent very shortly, their slope ratings and their slope charts. Uh, there's been a bit of a hold up with this due to the current situation, but we hope to have them released to the clubs very soon. So to give a practical example of this, so if I want to play the yellow tees at Bilth Wells Golf Club, I know that the slope rating is 122. Um, here is the example of their slope chart for the yellow tees, which they would have displayed either in the clubhouse, in the pro shop or on the first tee. Uh, I have a handicap index of 15.6. So to work out my course handicap, I simply look up where 15.6 falls on the chart, which would be here. I read across and my course handicap for the yellow tees at Bilth Wells would be 17. So once we've worked out our course handicap, we then need to work out our competition handicap allowance. So you've looked up your course handicap, you then convert it into the playing handicap for the format of golf that you are playing. And we'll have a look at the next slide, which will show us the different allowances. So as you can see from this chart, this shows us all of the handicap allowances for the different competitions which should be applied. So if I'm playing individual stroke play uh, with my course handicap of 17, I would then have 95% of that, which would give me my playing handicap. Hopefully very straightforward. Off we go, we play our golf. So after you've worked out your course playing handicap, you then do the most important part, which is to play the round of golf. Hopefully it goes well. After you've played, you obviously need to submit your score. Um, you need to submit the score as soon as possible after your round of golf, because as soon as you um, submit your score, everyone's handicap index will be calculated that evening. The closing of the competition and the calculation of the handicap should not be confused. Your handicap will be returned and recalculated regardless of whether the competition has been officially closed or not. So as a committee, a Someone in charge of the competition, member of the committee, you won't need to be returning to the club on Saturday, on Saturday night to satisfy all the post-competition admin if it's not practical. The scores will be returned automatically, but your competition results will not be official until you have done your due diligence. So as, as I've just mentioned, the score should be submitted as soon as possible after play has been, has been completed, as the handicap calculation will take place at midnight. This idea should be done in directly into the computer system and the scores should be submitted hole by hole, ensuring that any holes not played are clearly marked. As I've already mentioned, the handicap will be updated overnight and we're ready for the player the next day. If the score cannot be added for some reason, uh, it must be added to the player's record as soon as possible, ensuring that the PCC adjustment is applied for the round played. If more than one score is to be posted in a single day, for example, a multi-round competition, the handicap index would not normally be updated until the next day, so you wouldn't update the index between the rounds. 
So to recap the process, first thing you need to do is know your handicap index and where to find it. So either look it up on your app, online, at your golf club. You need then to look up your course handicap and you need to adjust this for the format of golf that you're playing. Then play golf and then post your score as soon as possible after the round into the computer. Hopefully very straightforward and not too dissimilar to what you're currently doing at your clubs. Hopefully what will the World will Handicap System together. mean for you, the player? It all starts with a measure of your golfing ability, calculated the same way for every player around the world. A handicap index that you can take with you anywhere and use at whatever course you're playing. Before your round, decide which tees you're going to play from, which can be different for each member of your group. Every set of tees will have a course and slope rating based on course difficulty. These will normally be available on a lookup chart near the first tee or through an app. Next, decide the format of play. This will determine the handicap allowance you will be given. Together, the course rating, slope rating and handicap allowance convert your handicap index into a playing handicap, representing the number of strokes you receive for the round, providing you the best opportunity of doing well, whoever you're playing. Some formats of play aren't suitable for submitting a score for handicap purposes. If you're playing a round and would like to submit your score, you may need to check the procedures before you play. If you're ever in doubt about the rules and procedures relating to handicapping, check with the club where you're playing. During the round itself, go out and play, enjoying the game as you always would. Knowing how many strokes you receive for the round also lets you know the maximum number of strokes that you'll receive on each hole. While one bad hole might mean you don't win the competition, you can still submit an acceptable score for handicap purposes. If the format of play allows, you should pick up when you reach your maximum hole score, keeping your game and the game of everyone else on the course moving along. At the end of your round, Add up your score, including any penalty strokes and any applicable adjustments for holes not played or where you didn't hole out. When your score is ready, make sure it's verified as required, then simply submit your score in accordance with club policy. By submitting your score as soon as possible, you ensure all necessary calculations, adjustments and safeguards can be applied, giving you an accurate, up-to-date handicap index ready for the next day or soon after. The more scores you submit, the more accurately your handicap index will reflect your ability. Up to date, easy to understand and adaptable. The World Handicap System lets you play the way you always have, as well as giving you a handicap index that will travel anywhere you decide to play. So moving on to the committees. So the handicap committee remains one of the most important parts of the handicapping process. You will be pleased to know. As it's the committee that provides the oversight of the system and ensures it's been applied fairly to all players at your club. The committee should be made up of at least three people and these should ideally be club members. So all the handicap committees in our Welsh golf clubs will be provided with information and tools for reviewing the handicap index for all members. Um, all clubs will be sent at least two of the rules of handicapping books for their use. These tools are designed to create consistent application of handicap reviews and adjustments. Com committees obviously have a very important role when to play when setting their terms of the competition where handicap restrictions might be applied. Uh, the tools that will be available to the handicap committees will allow them to undertake an informed handicap review process whenever appropriate to ensure that the handicap index of all home members continue to reflect their demonstrated ability. The software will recommend reports and give notifications to assist handicap committees identify those players who require a handicap review. A player can also request a handicap review if they believe their handicap index no longer reflects their demonstrated ability. 
A player must always be aware of and be involved in the handicap review process and be able to appeal a decision. Wales Golf are updating their appeals process in line with the WHS system and that will be available on the Wales Golf website. Again, the rules of handicapping go into far greater depth around the subject, but the basics of the current system of reviewing and ensuring handicaps current and correct are largely similar. So staying uh, on the idea of the handicap review, so uh, as well as playing information from competitions, the handicap committee has to take into account many other factors, um, such as improving play following golf lessons, outstanding performances in formats of play that are not acceptable for handicap purposes, such as match play, knockout competitions, um, maybe declining scoring potential due to frequency of playing, uh, someone's aging, uh, or maybe an incapacitating illness or injury. So how to adjust a player's handicap index? Well, any adjustment in a player's handicap must be at least one full stroke up to a maximum of five strokes above a player's low index. Should a committee wish to increase a handicap index higher than five strokes, they should seek approval from Wales Golf. There is no limit on downward movement. Any player with a handicap index of, of zero or lower for men and two or lower for women must seek approval from the union before applying adjustments, much the same way as the current CAT1 process works, but a bit a different handicap level. So when adjusting a player's handicap index, the adjustments can be made in two ways. So you can either reset the index. This is most common, and this is what we do now. So applying, you would apply an adjustment to the player's record to achieve the required index. The second option is not currently used, and this allows the committee to freeze a player's index at a certain value for a defined period of time. So within the world handicapping system, there is also the idea of applying a penalty score. So this would happen when the handicap committee decide that a player has not submitted a score for an invalid reason. A valid reason for not submitting a score might include sudden illness or injury, an emergency, a dangerous weather condition, or any other reason which the committee deems to be valid. An invalid reason for not submitting a score would be trying to prevent a low score um, from creating an index decrease, or perhaps preventing a high score to cause an index decrease. If the player's score is identifiable and they stop their round after having completed at least the minimum number of holes, the score should be posted for handicap purposes. This could be used after an NR or if the player forgot to post the card after the round. If the handicap committee concludes that a player failed to submit a score for the purpose of gaining an unfair advantage with their handicap, it should be considered to either withdraw the player's handicap index and or apply a penalty score. This penalty score could be a score put on the record equal to the current the player's current handicap index. So that's if the player is trying to gain a downward advantage. Or a score equal to the lowest score in the player's record if the player is trying to gain an upward advantage. Handicap committees should also consider disciplinary procedure for any repeat offenders. So if you do want to go that step further and withdraw a handicap index, uh, there is some provisos behind this. So a player must be notified of the period of the handicap index withdrawal and any additional conditions. The withdrawal of a player's handicap index should be applied only after the player has been informed and has the opportunity to respond. This process will initially be handled by the club's handicap committee and would be escalated to Wales Golf if necessary. A, a copy of the appeals process uh, will be available on the Wales Golf website in due course. A club will also need to reinstate the handicap indexes. The most common um, time when this will happen is when a player um, joins their club from perhaps a time out of the game. So at this point, the player will need to have a handicap index reinstated. When reinstating a handicap index, the committee has three options, which are demonstrated in the slideshow there. 
It's very important to stress that a handicap committee must then monitor the player's next competition rounds to make sure that they've got that level correct and adjust it if they need to. And we've got another video for here to once again the just pull together. The handicap index should always reflect a player's about. demonstrated ability. To ensure this, it is strongly recommended that handicap committees review the handicap index for all their home club members at least once each calendar year. When reviewing each handicap index, the handicap committee should consider all available information about a player before deciding whether any adjustments are required. A player's handicap index may be adjusted upwards or downwards. The committee may also freeze it or place a block on it moving upwards for a defined period. Additionally, the Handicap Committee has power to withdraw or reinstate a player's handicap index in certain circumstances or to adjust it due to a player's temporary or permanent disability. Regular handicap reviews help ensure the game is played on a fair and equal basis for all members, wherever they're playing and whoever they're playing against. The competition committee must set the handicap limits for their competitions and determine who is eligible to play. In some circumstances, a committee does have the power to set a playing handicap for an individual player. This could be if it's not been updated since the last round was played, potentially due to a technical technological glitch, or perhaps there is compelling evidence to suggest that the handicap index does not reflect the ability of the player in question. Consideration needs to be made to the fact that a player will no longer hold an inactive or active handicap. Many terms of competition will currently have the line stating that a player must have either an active handicap or perhaps have a C status to the handicap. This is no longer applicable, so a committee will have to assess how they wish to approach this. You could either leave this out completely and allow anyone with a current handicap index to enter the event or perhaps you could put in a rule that states a player must have played in three competitions over the last calendar year, or perhaps the last two years, or perhaps one competition or six competitions. So a competition committee needs to have a think about this and decide how they want to approach it. For competitions played on the same day or consecutive days, for ease of competition administration, purposes, it is strongly recommended that the handicap index used at the start of the competition is used for the duration of the event. This, of course, should be clearly stated in terms of competition and scores should still be posted by the end of each day. Ultimately, however, it's down to the committee to decide on their, how they want to run this. So just to recap on the impact on committees of the new system. So the committee needs to ensure scores are submitted promptly after round or by the end of the day. They should process scores as soon as possible after the end of the day. They should be conducting handicap reviews, establishing terms of competition with information about handicap index to use, and then acting as a home club or collaborating with the player's home club. And they also must understand the rights and responsibilities both themselves and the player. So what else will you need to know moving forward, which will help with this transition? Well, there will be a rules of handicapping book, which are coming out. As you can see from the screen, it's very much got the same look and feel as the rules of golf. So trying to um, have a consistent approach to the rules across the entire game. Following on from that point, as you can see, the style is the same. Um, it'll give you the principles of the rule, the body of the rule, including some diagrams and then interpretations of well in there. Throughout the course of the year, we're going to try and ramp up our information for clubs. So uh, we will be posting lots more information to the Wales Golf website and giving things for the clubs to put out, such as static posters. Moving on from this, obviously, one of the most important aspects of the new system will be the technology behind it. Um, Wales Golf can confirm that we will provide all clubs with a club management system that can either work alone or be used alongside your current ISV provider. The Wales Golf provided software will be used to manage your membership and handicapping database. You will still need your ISV provider to process competition and social golf scores, as well as if clubs have ISVs to run other club systems. 
All clubs will need technology in place to allow golfers to input their scores, e.g. A, a touch screen or a simple computer system. But many clubs already do have this. So here's an example of what the club portal might look like. So this is, a, which is what every club will be given this basic membership system. And as I say, the initial plan is what would just be handicapping and a membership database system. Some of the many benefits of this system is it's, we can, we'll be able to directly access a system and give you live course info updates. So if your uh, slope or course ratings change, we can impact it into the system directly for you. Uh, we can help deal with issues at the clubs. We can help deal with players switching between clubs, which is a current issue in the current system that's difficult to um, get right. Um, we can deal with players losing CDH numbers. We can uh, access and delete multiple CDH numbers. Um, we can help players transfer between clubs. We can help deal with suspended handicaps. We can edit players' records. So there's much greater usability and much greater ability for Wales Golf to help you with all your handicapping and membership issues. Hopefully that will make life a lot easier um, when dealing with these issues in the future, that Wales Golf can really have great access to your system and um, can help you work through some of these issues. So that's what the club's gonna get, but what are the players gonna have? Well, every single player in Wales will have access to a My Golf profile. So all golfers who are members of the golf club will be given a Wales Golf My Golf profile. And through this, you have the ability to view your index, to track your scores, and keep up to date on latest news, information, programs, promotions um, from both Wales Golf and Wales Golf partners. There will also be a facility within the system to interact with your fellow golfers. Linked to the MyGolf profile, all players will also have access to the Wales Golf app. So within this app, you will have the ability to view your handicap index, to look at your progression, look at your score details. And as I mentioned previously, there will be an opportunity to interact with your fellow golfers. So a social networking um, ability. So you can organize friends, you can comment on their golf, you can comment on their scores, you can follow one another and really keep in touch with your golfing buddies. Also within the app, again, there'll be the opportunity to interact with Wales Golf, so we can give you access to certain events and opportunities that we might have coming up or might be coming up within your club. In the future, we're hoping to really develop this app, so potentially have a course handicap calculator, uh, an inbuilt rules widget to help you on the course, uh, and then a tee booking system, and potentially even score scorecard for scoring on the course from the app system. So just moving on from that, again, here's just sort of examples of what the app's going to look like. So the ability to view scores, to um, look at your own profile, so we'll see what your scores, see your progression, um, see which scores are counting and see your index progression. Um, the ability to post onto social media sites, uh, to comment on scores, and also to keep track of all your friends. So the currently the transition to the World Handicap System is a huge job, which uh, Wells Golf are undertaking with our technology partner. Um, in preparation for this, um, we are asking clubs to do help us in a number of ways. So you can support us by cleansing your membership database, by encouraging as many players to post as many scores as possible throughout 2020. Although I don't realize that this is uh, becoming increasingly tricky at the minute with the fact that golf courses are shut. Um, also, I would say that clubs potentially is an opportunity to do a bit of analysis of your IT systems and make sure it's as good as it can be. Um, perhaps get onto your internet provider, see if you've got the most, the quickest, most up to date um, broadband speed. Uh, can you update your um, computer systems? and really make it the best that it can be for this system. Now, I'm not saying it's an absolute necessity that you need an all seeing and all dieting IT system, but the World Handicap System will rely on technology to make it work as well as possible. Um, so now might be as good a time as any to a bit of, do a bit of review on your IT systems and see if you can improve it in any way you can. 
So the process for the transition uh, will see the current Conkingham decaps converted using the scores on the CDH record that we hold. So obviously this conversion will be based on the WHS calculations. We'll use the last 20 scores on the record going back two years if we need to. Any player that does not have 20 scores on the record will use the scaled table that we showed earlier to give them an appropriate handicap calculation. This will then progress up to 20 scores and then it'll be best eight from 20 going forward. Once all handicaps are transitioned, there will be a period where both records will run alongside each other. So the Kongu record will run alongside the World Handicap System record. This will probably happen for a month or so and it will allow clubs and players to start seeing how their handicaps will look and how their handicaps will start to progress, but whilst they still play under their Kongu handicaps. Thank you very much for watching this uh, presentation. Obviously, it's uh, a little bit of an old format. We would have loved to have been sat in front of you or stood in front of you at this time, but unfortunately, situations have dictated that we can't. Um, hopefully, this has given you a good overview of what the system is going to look like. However, if you do have any questions, please, please do direct them to handicapping at walesgolf.org and we'll be happy to answer you any questions on the transition. A lot of the content in this slide was obviously developed before the coronavirus situation, um, so things might change across the course of the year. However, I will reiterate what I said at the very start of the presentation is that we are on track and we are still planning on launching the World Handicap System on the 2nd of November. Um, we very much hope that we'll be playing golf again very soon. And we very much hope that we'll be able to get out to you at some point during the year uh, and continue the program of workshops uh, as we wanted to over these last two weeks where we should have been in, in front of you in all the clubs in Wales. I uh, wish you all the best. Uh, please do look after yourselves, stay inside, and we look forward to playing some golf soon. Cheers.